I love Marvel Comics. It's my favorite fictional universe, but there are some stories I love more than all the rest. Within Comic Book Herald's best comics of all time, you'll find eight Marvel stories inside the top 50 and 23 total inside the top 100. Today, I'll be running down my top 15 in descending order, kicking off with the seven honorable mentions that made it inside the CBH Top 100. I highly recommend giving all of these a read, and let me know your favorites that didn't make the cut in the comments. Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. You are listening to the best Marvel comics of all time here on the CBH YouTube channel. If you like Comic Book Herald, please like, subscribe, share, comment, all that fun stuff on the video. Links to the best comics of all time and the picks today are here in the show notes as well. As always, Comic Book Herald is supported by backers on Patreon.com slash Comic Book Herald. In terms of where these comics are coming from today, we have two from the 1960s, one from the 1970s, four from the 1980s, three from the 1990s, eight from the 2000s, and four from the 2010s. If you want to go through all of these comic books with us, join us on the My Marvelous Year podcast, where we read through the history of Marvel Comics from its origins to today. We're reading all these. You can join us, join the club. It's a great time. Go to My Marvelous Year pod or MyMarvelousYear.com. Let's do it. Honorable mentions for the best Marvel comics of all time. Number 100 on the all-time list, Ultimate Spider-Man. Then, number 97, New X-Men. And number 84, Alias, a.k.a. Jessica Jones. 83, Black Panther, Panther's Rage. 82, Age of Apocalypse. 80, Guardians of the Galaxy by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. Number 77, Astonishing X-Men by Joss Whedon and John Cassidy. And the Immortal Iron Fist. If you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is way too fast, don't worry. These are just the honorable mentions. They're all linked in the show notes. We're going to go through the top 15 in a little more detail. Number 15, best Marvel comic of all time, and number 70 on the all time list, it's Wolverine Weapon X by Barry Windsor Smith. This series recontextualized many elements of Wolverine's backstory, exploring forgotten memories and revealing shocking new information about Logan's past. It also explored the physical and psychological torment that Wolverine endured during his time as a test subject in the Weapon X program. Perhaps more than anything, it highlights Barry Windsor Smith's incredible, incredible artistic vision. This is one of the best Marvel com- best looking Marvel comics and one of the best Marvel comics of all time. This one is weirdly collected in the pages of a little known outside of Wolverine story. It's Marvel Comics Presents. I think it's issue 72 to 84. And of course, we'll link that puppy in the show notes. Number 14, best Marvel comic of all time. And number 68 on the all time list Spider Man Craven's Last Hunt. This one ran from 1987 and 1988 between all three of the ongoing Spidey books at the time. It was written by J.M. DeMatties with art by Mike Zeck and Bob McCloud. Craven the Hunter, who decides to take down the Web Slinger once and for all, says it's him or me. One of us has to go. Craven succeeds too in capturing and seemingly killing Spider Man, only to adopt his identity and take on his role as a vigilante. Craven's descent into madness and his ultimate fate remain some of the most memorable moments in Spider-Man's history in what is the shining example of a dark Spider-Man story done right. Jam D. Mateus's, uh Spidey books, including Spectacular Spider-Man, are greatly underrated. This one is not. Craven's Last Hunt is our number 14 best Marvel comic of all time. Number 13 and number 67 on the all-time list, Captain America Run by Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting. Writer Ed Brubaker, artist Steve Epting, published by Marvel Comics from 2004 to 2012, their long run on Cap. Brubaker took a grounded and realistic approach to Steve Rogers, exploring the character's history and legacy, as well as his role as a symbol of American ideals. The series also dealt with complex political themes, including the consequences of the war on terror and the tension between freedom and security. One of the key storylines is, of course, The Winter Soldier, which sees Cap's former sidekick, Bucky Barnes. Uh, Spoiler alert, I guess, (laughs) but this was adapted into the MCU, so how could you not know? Revealed to be alive and operating as a brainwashed assassin for the Soviet Union. The storyline was notable for its tense plotting and emotional weight, as Cap is forced to confront the darker parts of his past and confront the reality of changing times. One of the best long runs you could possibly read in the entire Marvel canon. 
Number 12, best Marvel comic of all time. And number 64 on the all-time list, Ecstatics by Peter Milligan and artist Mike Allred. This one was published between 2002 and and 2004. Ecstatics is notable for its satirical take on modern culture, particularly the obsession with celebrity and media. The series deals with themes such as the commodification of identity and the influence of pop culture on society. It's a truly surprising replacement for what X-Force had been to that point, a subversive and thought-provoking take on the superhero genre with a dark humor and social commentary that largely holds up 20 years later. Number 11, best Marvel comic of all time. Number 63 on the all-time list, it's the X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga. Written by Chris Claremont with art by John Byrne, Jean Grey becomes the dangerous and unstable Phoenix. She destroys an entire planet, eats millions of innocent broccoli beings as Jean's internal struggle with the overwhelming force within her is a poignant exploration of the battle between good and and evil, and the fragility of the human spirit. The Dark Phoenix Saga is the climax of Claremont and Byrne's legendary run on Uncanny X-Men, raising the stakes and standards of what mutants could do and mean in the Marvel Universe, both in earthly struggles with the Hellfire Gala and on the cosmic landscape involving the Shi'ar, Galactic Empires, and the Watcher, an all-time classic for good reason. Number 10, best Marvel comic of all time, number 59, On the all-time list, Vision by Tom King and our artist Gabriel Walta Hernandez. Published by Marvel Comics in 2015 and 2016, this one follows the superhero android Vision as he attempts to live a normal life with a family of his own. The series won several Eisner Awards, including Best Limited Series and Best Writer for Tom King, and for good reason. King and Walta do a phenomenal job of capturing the sad, cruel, and funny irony of the Android Avengers' existentialist struggle. His fight with his dual natures, robot body, and human sense of identity, which is the creator and which is the destroyer, might be the kind of thing creators could overthink or oversell, but this pair keeps writing and artwork beautifully clean and unencumbered. It is direct, precise, plenty of room to fully consider the situation without creators forcing me towards their understanding. A lot of nuance, a lot of opportunity to decide for yourself, as is King's stock and trade. Vision is a fantastic read. Number nine on the best Marvel comics of all time. Number 51 on my all-time list, Uncanny X-Force by Rick Reminger, Jerome Opinia, and team. Originally published by Marvel Comics from 2010 to 2013, Wolverine, Deadpool, Archangel, Psylocke, and Phantom X as the lead team here. A very fascinating blend of morally complex characters. Reminder's Uncanny X-Force run is perhaps best known for its Dark Angel Saga storyline, which sees the team dealing with the return of Archangel's darker persona, Apocalypse. The storyline culminates in a complex multiversal battle that sees the team risk everything to stop their former teammate from bringing about the Apocalypse. This series is a visual masterpiece thanks to the artistic talents of Jerome Opeña, Phil Noto, and other collaborators charging the profound explorations of morality in a superhero universe that doesn't typically question such things. Number 8, best Marvel comic of all time. Number 45 on my all-time list, Walt Simonson's Thor. Ran from 1983 to 1987, Simonson's approach to Thor was marked by a return to the character's mythic roots, with the series featuring epic battles, sprawling storylines, and cosmic stale conflicts. One of the most famous storylines in Simonson's run on Thor is the Searcher Saga, which sees the demon Searcher attempt to bring about the destruction of Asgard and the end of the world. The storyline was marked by its sweeping scope and stunning visuals and remains one of the most beloved Thor story arcs to this day. Simonson's run also introduced new characters such as Beta Ray Bill, an alien who proves himself worthy to wield Thor's hammer, and Malekith the Dark Elf, who would become a recurring villain in the series. Personally, I love how Simonson invests so much of himself in this work that it feels like a creator-owned rendering of Asgard, not to be confused with his actual creator-owned work that he published later in IDW, just called Ragnarok. It stands out as one of the iconic 80s writer-artist showcases that featured contemporaries like Frank Miller, John Byrne, and several others, both writing and drawing some of the best Marvel runs of the 1980s. Number 7 on the best Marvel comics of all time. Number 40 on the all-time list, it's Fantastic Four, issues 1 to 60 by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. The big one that started it all and made Marvel Comics possible. It represents a turning point in the medium and superheroes. It's a testament to the power of collaboration between two creative 
geniuses. At the peak of their powers, Stanley and Jack Kirby, their ability to craft a story that resonates with readers on a profound level. The series not only launched Marvel Comics, but also ignited a love for superhero storytelling that continues to endure today. So, if you're diving into Marvel Comics, starting with the Fantastic Four is like embarking on a journey to the very heart of what makes this universe so fantastic. Kirby in particular sells bold, dynamic illustrations that bring the Fantastic Four and their adversaries to life in a way that is fresh and electrifying. Introductions of Doctor Doom, of Galactus, of the Black Panther, of the Inhumans. Kirby's innovative use of panel layouts and cosmic landscapes set a new standard for comic book art at the time and, of course, influenced generations of artists to come. Number six on the best Marvel comics of all time. Number 38 on the all-time list, Marvel's 1994 by Kurt Busiak and Alex Ross. They took a new approach to celebrating the history of Marvel Comics, sweeping the publisher's most iconic moments through the literal lens of photographer Phil Sheldon. Much like Busiak would go on to do in Astro City, the series explores the world of the Marvel Universe through the eyes of ordinary people, focusing on the impact that superheroes have on the everyday society. Ross's masterful layouts and compositions create a sense of grandeur and awe-fitting of the Marvel Universe. The painterly style had rarely, if ever, been seen when it dropped in 1994. Ross has gone on to become a superstar. Kurt Busiak goes on, of course, to do Astro City and the Avengers. But in Marvels, they captured what made Marvel Comics so amazing. Four-issue, perfect, limited series. Number five, best Marvel comic of all time, Jim Starlin's Thanos Saga. So because I have Starlin's various Marvel cosmic works, Thanos Quest, Infinity Gauntlet, Adam Warlock, Captain Marvel, etc. spread out throughout my top 500, I realized putting this list together that I didn't have a tidy way to show how much I enjoy the Starlin verse as one cohesive whole and the writer artist second only to Kirby work building Marvel Cosmic, Adam Warlock, and yes, yes, Thanos. We'll consider this consolidation me rectifying that wrong. Starlin's Infinity Saga is the driving influence on the first three phases of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Starlin's work developing Thanos into the best Marvel Cosmic threat this side of Galactus covers five decades. Truly, truly excellent all-time great work. If you have not read Jim Starlin's Thanos Saga in full, rectify that immediately. Number four on the best Marvel comics of all time. Number 31 on my all-time list, Frank Miller's Daredevil and Elektra. Miller's original Daredevil run began in, 19, in 1979 and continued until 1983, during which he served as both writer and artist for the series. Miller's approach to the character was much darker than previous iterations, exploring the gritty and violent underbelly of New York City and the psychological toll that being a masked vigilante takes on Matt Murdock, a.k.a. Daredevil. At the same time, Miller also toys with a whimsy to the Marvel Universe in story beats like Foggy Nelson taking on the hapless persona of Guts in a vicious crime world or near-do-well henchman Turk gaining access to Stiltman Stilts, every man's dream. What's remarkable here is how effectively Miller came back to Daredevil in subsequent years, whether on Born Again with artist David Mazzucchelli, arguably the single greatest story in Marvel, or on Daredevil Love and War on Electra's Assassin with Bill Sienkiewicz. With Daredevil, there's before Miller and there's after Miller, and there's no debate about which we're better off for having. Number three, best Marvel comic of all time. Number 11 on the all-time list, Hawkeye by Matt Fraction and David Aha. This is from John Galati's writing on Comic Book Herald's best comics of the 2010s. This is one of those books where I opened up and immediately thought, well, of course. As in, well, of course you'd take the least popular Avenger, make his enemies a gang of street toughs in bad tracksuits and worse haircuts, and for sure, you should do all of this with infographics. Yes, this is how comics are made. Matt Fraction and David Aha's take on Hawkeye is the most back-of-the-class pitch I've heard since Slapstick, but the book just works flawlessly. The humor is so good it holds up after rereads. The art is witty yet crystal clear. The characters are charming and affecting and their struggles feel both laughable and heart-wrenching. So yes, of course, this is how comics should be made. Number two, best Marvel comic of all time. Number 10 on my all-time list, Amazing Spider-Man by Stan Lee, Steve Jitko, and John Romita. We're talking issues number one 
to number 104. Spider-Man is my favorite superhero of all time, and it's this Silver Age debut that hooked me on diving headfirst into reading as much of the Marvel Universe as I could get my hands on. Lee's writing and Ditko's art brought a new level of realism and relatability to superhero comics, with Peter Parker's personal struggles and everyday problems often taking center stage alongside his superhero exploits. And you get an absolutely magical introduction to so much of the Spider-Man mythos here, including Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Aunt May, Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy, J. Jonah Jameson, and of course, the weird aliens the Tinkerer was working for in Amazing Spider-Man number two. Number one, the best Marvel comics of all time. Number four on my favorite comics of all time list, Jonathan Hickman's Marvelverse from 2008 to 2016. Hickman's most notable Marvel work here includes Secret Warriors, Fantastic Four, Avengers, New Avengers, Infinity, and Secret Wars. These series explore complex themes and concepts such as alternate universes, cosmic entities, time travel, and the nature of power and leadership. While there are certainly tighter individual comics and graphic novels, nothing in big, messy superhero continuity placed my endless fandom like the work of author Jonathan Hickman with Marvel Comics. From 2008 to 2016, Hickman and various collaborators delivered the following. My favorite Fantastic Four run since Kirby and Lee. My favorite Nick Fury stories since Jim Steranko. My favorite Justice League story masquerading as an Avengers story in literally forever. And my favorite comic book event of all time. There's a glorious sense of long-term planning and connective tissue that makes every story in this shared playground feel like it's building towards something revelatory. And in Secret Wars, Hickman even managed to stick the landing with artist Isai Ribich, a feat nearly unheard of among big two creators throughout the 2000s. So that is why Jonathan Hickman's Marvelverse is my favorite Marvel comic of all time. You now have the top 15. There you have it, the best 15 Marvel comics of all time. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments and elsewhere. Thanks to those of you who made this video possible with your support on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash comicbookherald for ways to support CBH and the endeavors here on your own. Of course, again, you can check out CBH's best comics of all time. Links in the show notes as well as this full list if you want to read through all these on your own. And I highly recommend that you do. So thanks everybody for listening. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. And as always, enjoy the comics.